so I didn't want to happen. What's up everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. We are back with another top 10, dang it. Dang it. Not, Nick, nothing, nothing on earth is gonna stop us from doing board game content, baby. Woo, we're excited. Indeed, indeed. Legitimately excited. If you're watching this very far after this, we're in the middle of the Coronas COVID-19 uh, global pandemic, yeah. which is awesome, but it's cool. Luckily for us, we do everything mostly in this studio, so yeah. uh, this is us isolating, ultimately. We're already self-isolated, so it's perfect. I uh, hope everyone out everyone. there is doing just fine. Huh? Huh? You keep looking at my hair. Am I good? Oh, you look good. I'm sorry. I do that a lot during you our do. videos. Well, hey, you always do one of these. You look up and are like, what happened to my head? <laughs> no, your hair looks good. It's got a good Thanks. swoop. Sorry. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Anyway, so, bad, so I pulled it back. Nah. We are here to do a top 10 for you that we thought was a little bit fitting given the time. Uh, not everyone is able to get together or really ought. We shouldn't oh, be yeah. getting together with everyone we know right now. Uh, so we figured it's a good time to explore solo gaming if yes. you haven't already. Indeed. And this is a list that we actually been planning on doing. We're either going to do it next or within the next two or three. So we're like, you know yeah. what, let's go ahead and do it Let's now. Do it. Give people some suggestions of stuff you can play all on your own. Indeed, and this is a, a, an area of gaming that we used to not really be into at all. Right. But I think as time goes on, We've both been getting more and more into solo games where now if a game yeah. has a solo, like it says like one Rip. to four on the box, I'm gonna say like, ooh, you can solo it. That's tell me about that one that's number. Interesting. And there's a lot of people who only solo games, so that's a big deal. Yeah. So we wanna talk about our top ten solo games. We wanna say these are games, some of them are solo only, but then some are just games that have a solo variant. It's everything mixed yeah, in. It's a little bit of a mix, just all things that create uh, fun. Solo experiences. Yeah, indeed. Um, Should we go to our quick honorable mention? Let's go to a quick honorable mention. Uh, a lot of cooperative games, not all of them, not but all. a lot of cooperative games uh, you can solo because you could play as basically two people. Yeah. You could you could play two characters and just kind of bounce back and forth taking your turns and stuff. So you could Gloomhaven, you could play solo. Yeah. Maybe you ought to because it'd be easier to get done because it's only on play for your time. Solo. You know, so uh, co op games offer up a lot of. Uh, fun opportunities to do solo gaming. Yeah. We prefer like if it's a co-op game I want to be with I want to be cooperating with somebody. Yeah, so totally. we kind of don't solo co-op games very often, but it's a good for an honorable mention yes. because you probably have some co-op games that you probably could solo yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of them are just great. It's just not generally our preferred way of soloing yeah. stuff. But um but yeah, so that's our honorable mention. Let's go ahead and get into our number 10. Uh, number 10 for us is going to be Empires of the North, which is an Imperial Settlers game. Yeah. Uh, I really like the uh, solo because it. this is one that uh, we, we, we'll kind of talk about why our solos, but we don't typically like just sort of play for your best score situation. Not generally, no. Uh, Empires of the North, it's nice because it actually offers a little mini kind of solo campaign, yes. which will give slightly... It'll vary the game a little bit yes. and also give you like you got to do this thing in order to qualify for scoring and then it's a yes. beat your own score type thing but there is you have to uh, based on the scenario accomplish something in order to even qualify yeah. so I appreciate it. and that. even if it's that it's like the win or lose scenarios you have to score 75 points or you lose and it's like that's just an arbitrary thing but I do I like having a win lose yeah. scenario give me a goal Give me a goal to go off of, yeah. Yeah. And you really, really liked Empire's I North really Solo. do, yeah. because you get those little scenarios that are different, and they change the little things that will happen each round, so it gives a little bit of variation there. And I, I like sometimes uh, solo games where... Once you're just doing your turn, you're just you're sort of playing out as you would normally, yeah. like a, a game of Empires of the North around rather. You kind of play until you're out of resources, out yeah. of workers, you just have no more stuff you can do. Yes. And so this is very much the same way in the solo game. One thing I like is uh, Empires of the North is all about figuring out your faction. And I like to be able to sit down and just like take my time and really, really think about my ruminate cards. Ruminate on it. Yeah, and like, mm, I could do this and like sort of put that, oh, maybe I'll do this instead and like really figure it out and I'm not worried about time. Yeah. And so it, I found it to be a very relaxing experience and you can just kind of really get to know a faction that way by taking your time and really kind of investigating. Uh, and then having little scenarios to qualify to score at all was uh, cool. So I really liked Empires yeah. of the North. And yeah. it, it, there's no real change. There's no AI in that game um, yeah. other than like the and little scenario effects. I will say for solo games for the most part, I don't... I tend to like solo games less when like I have to be playing the other character. 
Sure. Like, you know, it's like, I kind of like it where it's like, I get to play my game, yeah. it, whether it's the same or different, but then it's like when the AI goes, it's quick. I want them to go like, da they're done. And so mm -hmm. then I can focus on myself. I don't like it where I eventually, essentially have to have two different board, like suburbia is this way. It's like, you have to have like your own borough in suburbia and then someone else, and then the, I think it's called Dale Bot. Yeah. And, and then you have to put like tiles in their neighborhood, but then you, you have, have to, to figure out the best move. For yeah, them. you have to figure out the yeah. best move for them and then do it. I don't like ones where I have to essentially play two different players. Sure. When I don't really care about the solo. I just want, I want, I want, I don't care about my solo opponent. I just want to focus on my own stuff. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So I like games with like not much AI generally, but it just yeah. depends. Or it's for, for it to be easy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so in Empires of the North, it's just you're kind of playing out more or less as usual and you just try to basically stretch as far as you can go and you have I think five rounds it is or it might even vary depending but you have a, a, a finite amount of time yeah. to get stuff done and get to it I think I think there's um even now that I think about it, there's scoring thresholds you have to hit yeah you have to have scored at least this amount in this time so that's cool too oh, really? so okay. really it, it you gotta you gotta be quick you yeah, know you yeah. gotta you gotta focus and stuff so uh, that's why Empires of the North is our number a 10, everybody. Yeah. Do give it a try. Uh, I really like it. It's a fun way to explore those factions. Uh, and while you're thinking about that, I went in. I did that too long. We're going to number nine. We're going to number nine. Number nine is going to be Orleon. Oh. Orle. Oh. Just like that. Orleon um, is uh, our number nine up. Uh, Orleans is re a great game, and it's a game that we love so, so much. And one so thing good. I like about Orleans is there's a couple different expansions so for good. it. And all the expansions essentially add different ways to play the game. I would say, yeah. well, just as a disclaimer, Orleans, the base game, does not have a solo version. Yes. It is only in the expansions. But I believe the five-player expansion, which we don't have, gives you a solo scenario. But the Invasion expansion, which is a massive expansion, which makes a co-op version. There's like a two-player two version. version. But there's also three solo games in there. Three different solo games. Right. And it's it's kind of like the Empire's North, where it's like you're trying to do different things, but your gameplay itself doesn't really change that much. You're not really going against any opponents, so you're not like competing for different resources like you do in the right. normal game. You're just playing your game more or less as normal, but you have to do certain things. So there's like one where you have to gain a certain amount of citizen tiles. So the citizen tiles mm. around you get them by doing certain so things. That's your focus now. That's your focus. Is you yeah. have to gain, I believe, eight of them. And so, and then you have a certain amount of rounds to do them in, and there's all these specific um, events for each solo scenario. You know, some might be good, some might be bad, but they're all printed out on this essentially big cardstock card that has all the information you need for that solo one. So and other cool. than that, you kind of play normal. And then yeah. there's another one, another one where you're building up like a big capital city that's not in Orleans, you're building up somewhere else. You have to do all this stuff to meet that. And you win or lose if you did not do it by the end of the scenario. And then there's a third one. And then again, I believe there's a fourth one, I believe in the fifth player expansion. But they're really, really fun, and they're really hard as well, and they also do have difficulty ratings. So there's three of them, I believe. Oh, um, so you can work your way up. Yeah, which is nice. And it's just so cool that, like, that's such a cool way to do an expansion. Like, oh, now it's soloable, and it, we have a couple different scenarios for you to solo. And uh, it's just really, really fun. It takes a game that, like, in a lot of ways is kind of already multiplayer solitaire where you're all competing but you're all kind of doing yeah. your own thing. Like yeah, you're competing for different resources stuff like that but like when it comes to your own board, there's not much I can do to affect you in terms of where your placement is. So making it solo, it doesn't change your game that much. Now you just have new goals to go for. So instead of going for this, this, this that you do in a normal competitive game, now I need to focus on citizens. So I look yeah. at the board, they're all over the place. How can I get them all in time? And it's really, really fun. Um, and it's just, it's a great expansion as a whole. And one of the best parts about it is the fact they give you three solo uh, scenarios. And it's really, really fun. It's, a, it's a, a solo game that I really like to play. And I'll go out of my way to play this one, which is, um, it's just, uh, Orleans great in every every capacity. It's wonderful. Uh, but yeah, so our number nine is going to be Orleon, um, which only comes in expansion, unfortunately, but it is worth getting for many reasons. So that's number nine, Orleon. Let's get into number eight. So number eight is a game that is actually a solo game. It is yes. only just for you. It's just, party just you. one. Yeah. Just take it to you with to a restaurant. Bring it on. Yeah. Uh, and it's good any day of the week, but especially good on Friday. <laughs> good one. Because it's Friday. That's, that's the joke. That's the game. Get it? The game is called Friday, folks. Uh, Friday is a game where you are playing the, the, the titular character Friday, and you are trying to help out Robinson Crusoe. Yeah. 
on an island. Uh, and Friday is this, I don't I haven't read her, assistant person. The person that helps out Robinson Crusoe, okay? I don't and actually know either. You gotta take Robinson Crusoe through these these trials and things. And Robinson Crusoe is super easy. Not, no, it's uh, <laughs> so hard. Uh, the problem is Robinson Crusoe is not very smart. He's, He's not. not very skilled. And Robinson. you have to go through these these uh, trials, and basically you'll be presented. You'll flip over. It's a card game. You flip over a card, um, and you are trying to basically overcome. Uh, you encounter some animal yeah. or something like that, and you you have to draw Generally cards. Generally, terribleness. Yeah. yeah, to get like a certain amount of successes. But there's also yeah. a lot of cards that will give you either no success, no failures, or failures. Yeah. You know, and so you're trying to get to a, th a three, for example, and I play a two, and then play a negative one, and you can keep drawing cards, but you have to kind of give up your life points. So it becomes this, this challenge of when to dig in and fight a fight yes. versus when to just accept the failure, accept your losses, I... and move on and, yeah. and try to like live to fight another day. Uh, then uh, challenges you overcome, the cards are, are uh, like reversible, essentially. Yeah. You can flip it over and it becomes a card for Robinson to then use. Yeah. That will maybe give you more successes or allow you to draw cards or allow you to do... Uh, free plays and things like that to, uh, or just give you a card that has a lot of successes on it and stuff. And so it's this kind of deck builder of a, of a fashion. Uh, and you're trying to go through kind of three phases, like an easy and medium and a hard, and then eventually you get to these two pirate ships that you face. And if you manage to overcome those as well, then you win. It's yeah. incredibly difficult. Yes. Because I played it, you've played it a lot more than I have. And I played, cause I was just like, this is it's very so hard. hard yeah. That I was just like, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> <laughs> like I like it a lot. It was really fun, but it was it is very difficult. Which I, to be fair, like difficult solo games. I want yeah. solo games to be hard. Yeah. And this one is hard. It's really hard. It's really brutal. Um, it's fun. There's an app that's why I got first started app, playing yeah. it, and then I eventually got the physical card game because I like it. But one, because it gets hard because every time you go through your whole deck, you shuffle and you get these new cards. But you also has to shuffle in aging cards. Robinson yeah. Crusoe's getting older and getting What's slower wrong with you, Robinson? and dumber. And just there's more things to overcome, and uh, it's cool because a, 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 when you basically fail, you can selectively fail. You have to lose some life. It allows you to ditch cards. You get yeah. to d discard some of those really awful cards. Uh, so it's just this incredibly hard card puzzle, basically. Friday yeah. is very fun, though. Uh, get it in the app or get the physical thing uh, game if you like. I've never won the game physically. Physical. I've won in the app. I've never physically won. I think it's harder somehow. I don't know. Yeah, uh, you know. It's really good though, uh, and that's why it's our number eight. Uh, incredibly challenging little card game, just for one. Just for one, and it's Friday. Let's go ahead and get our number seven right ah. now. Our number seven is a game that I, I feel like. This led to its popularity in a lot of different ways. Uh, this game is very, very popular, and that is Terraforming Mars. Oh, yeah. Terraforming Mars, and one of the main things we heard about Terraforming Mars when it first came out was just people talk about how good the solo version is. They're like, yeah, da, 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 it's so good, da, da, da. but it's got a really good solo version. Like, you can solo it, and it's really, really fun. And people talk about how much they solo it yeah. and how much they like soloing it. And we had uh, Terraforming Mars for a while. Before either of us really soloed it, actually, which is yeah, kind of like, weird, uh, we do a series, or specifically I do a series on our channel called You Can Solo That. Go watch it. It's a good series, you know. But nonetheless, it's like I did uh, I did Terraforming Mars way late, like way, way after a bunch yeah. of other stuff. We had had it for a while. I just, for some reason, had never soloed it. But it is really, really fun. And you started playing it before I did even. Yeah, and I soloed it a bunch. Um, and I, I enjoy it. It's it's the same game. Yeah. It's another one similar to kind of Empires of the North where it's just you yeah, trying to do as much as you can with the resources you have, building that engine up. Um, but it, it gives you the challenge. Um, I can't remember how many rounds. I think it's 15 rounds or something. It's Generations. Like 14, yeah. 14. You have to... Uh, yeah, I think it is 14. You have to terraform the planet. You yes. have to get the terraforming by done point. by that point. Yes, win or so, lose, good stuff. Yeah, so one thing that's really interesting is like there's a lot of cards and stuff that maybe will help you get this engine built up or that engine, but basically a lot of the cards become like less important because yes. you need stuff that's going to help you get the heat up, get yes. the air going. Get those oceans out and things like that. So, so oh, it, it I get to take four it. plants from Mike. Oh, Mike's not here. That card doesn't matter anymore. You know. Yeah. So yeah. it's like it's all important to just try to find ways to terraform the planet and yeah. and do it in in as quick as times you possible as possible. And normally you start off with a terraform rating of twenty. Yeah. But here you start off with a terraform rating of fourteen. Yeah. So and that affects how much money you get each round. Yes. And you think like, what's six bucks? 
But you start off so hamstrung financially, it's very hard to get going. So it's a tough it's a tough, it's a tough sell. Yeah, it's it's tough. And I think that's what you'll see this a lot on our, on our list is like games where it's like that, where essentially you're just trying to solve a puzzle. Yeah. Because if you're playing Terraform Mars against other people, you're trying to like jockey for position on the planet, you're trying to do all that stuff. But if you take all that away, it's just a puzzle of just like, these are the cards I have, these are the cards that I'm getting. How can I get to this goal by this point? And it's just a yeah. puzzle of trying to make it work. And I really like solo games like that where yeah. they, when you're solo it just becomes a puzzle that i then can get tackle it's kind of the same as me sitting around playing sudoku yeah. or me doing uh what that truck is doing out there um thanks truck uh it's like me doing like sudoku or me doing like a crossword to me it's like yeah. the same kind of concept it's you alone it's brain trying to figure out a puzzle and yeah. this is feels very like that yeah i agree uh and terraform mars is just it's a fun game it's it's cool to to get like full credit for for saving the planet or creating the planet you're like i did all of this and then after you if you succeed you also are trying to beat your own score and that's so totally fair yeah. you're trying to you're trying to terraform the planet and in good fashion as well you know yeah. uh and it's it just creates a fun experience i was actually surprised like i really liked it i thought it it was more challenging than i thought it was going to be um and you can incorporate the uh, the modules if you want like i've never done this but if you want to play venus next with it you have to also terraform I Venus, that. and I there's I cannot it's picture hard. a possible way that, I, how, how you yeah. can possibly get it done. And then I, so I it's actually, like, if you want the data challenge, go for it. I tried it once. I can't remember what it was, but I know when you get the Prelude expansion, there's another solo yes. game in there, which is really really cool. Yeah. Um, so now there's a couple different ways to play. It's just awesome. Like yeah. Pure Mars is great. It's just a wonderful game, and one of the best things about it is it's got a great solo mode that is. So awesome, and yeah. I like that more and more games nowadays have viable, good solo versions. Yeah, and because publishers I've, have realized that there's a lot of the community, that's yeah. what they play. You want to have options to play, like don't put up a barrier to yeah. play. That's one thing we, you're talking about, Orleans, that I really appreciate with the Invasion expansions. It gives you a two-player specific way to yeah. play. Now it's great at two-player. It gives you solo modes, now it's great solo. So now there's no reason there's to not yeah. play. Yeah. And there's co-op if you want to play co-op. Yeah. It's just like, give us no reason to not play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Terraform Mars, and the thing I like about that is it does it very simply. Yes. It's just like, kind of makes your life a little harder, gives you specific goals, and it gives you a deadline. And that's yeah. enough to like make a challenging, fun experience. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why it's our number seven. So let's go ahead and get into our number six. All right, number six, folks. It's time to talk about Paladins of the West Dang. Yes, indeed. Also the West Kingdom. Yeah, indeed. This is a, this is a, is this the newest one on the list? It might be. I think it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is the newest one. It's the newest one. It's the newest bay. I got, I got, I got a wild hair in me one day and I was just like, really loving Paladins West Kingdom. I'd you say are. it's probably the best game of 2019 if I had to measure. Uh, and I was like, I want to play this, but there's no one to play with. Uh, so I'm just going to figure out how the solo works. Yeah. And I'm glad I did. I've actually sol soloed it a couple times since then on Tabletopia and things just because I want to be able to play the game. Uh, and Paladins does. Um, we like so solo games that are kind of easy to get into. Yes. Paladins has a pretty robust AI. It does. But it's easy uh, It's easy enough to kind of work out it's what you easy. should do. And I don't hate every game where you have to do a lot for the AI. Yeah. I just generally prefer... The thing I like about this... When I don't have to. Yeah. yeah. The thing I like about this is basically you'll be playing against an AI opponent trying to yes. beat their score and they have a, a deck of scheme cards that yes. will... You'll flip over and basically they'll try to do that action if they can. If they have yes. the workers for it, if they have the attributes uh, for it. Um, you're trying to do all these different things. And so the, the reason I like this is because I don't have to then figure out like, what's the best, if I was playing against myself, what would be the best move here? It's like, yeah. no, you do the thing, it's just like, it's gonna try to do this, it's gonna try to take this specific card. If it can't yeah. do it, it's gonna take the card to the right of it yeah. and to the right of that. So it gives you, it makes it pretty quick to determine what that person can do. Yeah. I don't have to then, like you said, suburbia, try to think of like, this would give them more one more income than that oh, one. So it's like, oh, then you're just yeah. playing against yourself, literally. Yeah. So this is a pretty robust AI and it's very difficult because they will, um, through, they don't ever gain resources. They yes. don't need them. So instead of gaining resources, they'll move along this resource track. And every time that yep. track ticks over, they get to b boost their weakest attribute, yeah. whether it be faith, Which strength, is... influence. And that's a big way to get points is if yes. you get those attribute markers I mean, it might up, be the biggest swing of points in the game. If the, you get them all really yeah. high, it's a it's lot It's the biggest single thing. And they will get, by the end, they will get their markers. All three very will be high. very high yes. unless you can find a way to stop it. Uh, so, I mean, I got destroyed when I yeah. played. Um, but it's really fun because I love Paladins of the West Kingdom. I love working out my little action yeah. selection, kind of like Orleone. And now I have this opponent 
that is pretty fierce, and it doesn't take a ton of time no. to figure out what they do, because you flip over the card, can they do that thing? No, if oh. they can't, they'll do this other look supplemental track thing. All right, cool. Done. Done. Now back now to I me, focus on me, back boom, to them. Boom, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it was um, pretty, it was, for being a pretty robust AI, pretty easy to manage. Yes. Uh, and it created a really difficult experience uh, trying to beat an already game that I'm not good at, a hard game. Uh, so I really enjoy Palance yeah. Kingdom Solo. It's really fun. And it's a big game that might be hard to get to the table, so now you can you can play it. The only bummer is that it, it will still hog up a ton of tables, so you need to have some space to play it. it. But it's really fun. I do suggest you try out yeah. Palance Lost Kingdom Solo, yeah. styly. Solo! Yeah. Yeah. Palance Lost Kingdom is our number six. Uh, really, really great game. Uh, Mike said it all. It's, it's really wonderful. I don't think I've won either. I think I've tried like two... A couple times it's now. It's really hard. And it's really hard. It's and really hard. And you can hard. go easy, medium, hard. You can make yeah. it hard. And it's just, it's very difficult. Yep. So that's a really robust one. And our number five is a little bit simpler. So we'll go ahead and get into that. Joe. Yeah. So our number five is Viticulture. Mm. This is my favorite game of all time. Mm. Mike's, as, as last week we did our list, his second favorite of all time. And this is a Good solo too. game. And I believe all of Stonemaier games have solo games, if not most of them do. I mean, there's a number of companies that almost always have solo games. Board and Dice, every single one of their games is a solo yeah. game. I think all Renegade games, or most Renegade games, have solo versions, which is yeah. really, really cool. But Viticulture is a great solo game because of how darn simple it is. It is so, automa, so though. simple. That Automa system, which is a direct, like, <laughs> opposite of something like Scythe, where the, where the Automa system works really well, but is confusing it just is and and so especially now with like scythes on steam and stuff like that i'm like i never need to sell that again i was playing on steam no. but nonetheless viticultures is great and a lot of worker placement games lend themselves to solo versions because you just need to find a way for the ai to block worker placement spots and that's exactly yeah. what this one does if you're in spring in viticulture game about making wine in spring uh you have four seasons or two seasons in the main game four mm -hmm. seasons in the expansion in Tuscany, yeah. and basically say we're in spring right now you do your turn and then you have the automa deck, you flip it over and it has different actions on there. So like, you know, draw cards or do this action, do this action, all these different actions. And basically if one of the actions on the card is in the season that you're in, so like draw green card, draw vine cards is in spring. If I'm in spring and that's on there, then I would take one of the automa colors, which is just a random color and block it. But if that one isn't on the card, or there's no cards in your season, then you just but, don't do anything. It doesn't yep. block anything. Your whole season's good. You can proceed as normal. Yeah, so that's all you do. On their turn, you flip over cards, see if they block anything. If they do, put a thing down there. If they don't, then whatever. Go off and you do your own thing. And so it is it is so easy in terms of you're literally just going like, boom, yes, no, all right, cool, boom. But it feels a lot like you're playing against a player because a lot of worker placement games is jockeying for position yep. and being like, blocked God, it. Mike, please don't take that spot. Please don't take that spot. And then you do like, cut, cut like that and the autonomous system does the exact same thing where you're yeah. just like you're about to draw the card you're like just don't take harvest field it's only thing i need to do and then Mustn't. boom harvest field you're like god damn it and it just like and it that that kind of that anguish you feel when someone takes a spot yeah. you need to go to is there exactly like it is in a normal game but the autonomous system is so quick so simple and then after that you're just playing your normal game and you're getting yeah. blocked out and you're trying to like get to places first and it's so easy so simple. If you know how to play Viticulture, you can immediately pick up the, the solo version. There's not really anything to learn. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's so good. And it, again, it's so good. And one of the main things is because of how simple it is. It's su super simple. And the other thing that I really appreciate is, uh, at least in Tuscany, you're put on a deadline. You have seven years. Yes. You have seven rounds to get above mm -hmm. the point threshold. You, yeah, so, so you, you have you that do... deadline. That gives you your win-loss condition. Yep. You have, and there's a wake-up chart. And you can only go to each space on the wake-up chart one Once, time. Yeah. So the bonuses and things that come with that are only going to be used yeah, one time. Yeah. So figuring out game, when to do that, is when to go, which which thing. So it has this other level yes. now. This pressure of time. You're like I got to get my engine up. And you're and like, you're fast. like, I have to get there by seven seasons. That seems it seems impossible. But you can pull it off. It's hard to, but you can yeah. pull it off. It's just viticulture. Viticulture is the greatest game ever made. Of course, it's got a good solo version. Come on, greatest game ever made. Second, boom. Um, but nonetheless, that's our number five viticulture. Very simple, very easy, very great. Love it to death. Uh, and let's go again and get our number four. It's the best Anima system that Stonemaier's ever done. Said it. Tower number four is all about books, you damn nerds. Books! 
and specifically running your own monster library, and it is Ex Libris. What a weird, cool theme. It is. Like, let's go into fantasy theme and just do the most boring possible thing in that fantasy world is just run a Organize library. Organize books. But it's yeah. perfect. It's fantastic. Oh, it's a fantastic a game. game that has a really... This was a, a slightly baffling one. I don't... I, it works really well, and I feel like it shouldn't, but it does... It's a great solo in, in, in the solo game. It's you versus the public library. Yeah. yeah. And the Damn public, public library is, is hilarious within its theming because yes. like you as a as a you know a well to do learned librarian. Learned I don't librarian, know. you believe in the Dewey Decibel system. Yep. You oh. gotta make some nice organized shelves yep. that aren't gonna fall over. Gotta be alphabetized. That are easy yeah. to find your books, or referencing, and all that's good. Public library don't care about none of that Nothing. crap. Just put it in a big old pile. They put they would take any book. Any book. They'll just put them in piles. Yeah. They don't care about alphabet alphabet alphabetizing Nothing. things. Like they stopped doing that years they ago. Make it's up just a dumpster with fire. Quantity though. Yeah, and they just they just have the main thing they have is a lot of books. And it be it's a it's just you versus the public library, and it's yeah. incredibly difficult. Now, the way that all manifests is any time in the game where you're going to be, you get to draw three cards, you get to keep one and discard other things. Any cards that get discarded all game long, including at the end of each round, uh, or beginning of each round, rather, you'll discard a certain amount of cards straight away depending to the, the discard pile, yeah. depending on the difficulty level. That creates the public library. Yeah. It's all the discarded books. So... You, they even though it's random, stack they get books. a lot of books. And they're by virtue of that, they are going to probably get a lot of the prominent works books. Yep. They're going to get a lot of their specific focus yep. books. They're just going to get a lot of stuff. And it can be incredibly difficult to overcome because you are trying to go score for score, tit for tat, uh, to beat their score. Yeah. But they're going to have so much more stuff yeah. than you. And you do have scoring opportunities that they don't have. Like yeah. you, you have to make your shelf stable and you get a certain amount of points depending on how stable your shelf is but they don't have that but you need those things to yeah. try and breach the deficit that you are because yeah. they have so many books yeah and it's just oh my gosh this is a game that we talked about this multiple times because it's a worker placement game where there's a bunch of different locations out a bunch of different places where you can get books essentially mm -hmm. and you're putting your workers out and and the the difference in the locations uh, the more locations come out or in this game locations go away yeah. in the solo game but nonetheless this game is one big puzzle and it's a game that I actually might prefer solo yeah, really. rather than competitive because locations are all different it has very small writing which is what everyone complains about and it's totally valid but it's just when you're on your own it's just talking about the puzzle like the puzzle of trying to because the game is already really deceptively thinky yes because it's a really hard puzzle Organizing your library, putting things in order, trying to get things in the right spot. You're trying to get the right books, trying to avoid banned books, you know. Yeah, and then you're doing all that while the public library is just like, <laughs> just taking everything, everything, like any cards that are left over on the board poof, goes straight to the public. It's just yeah. such a bear to overcome. And it's so much fun. Yeah, it's really, it's just one thing that like, it's just all random discard and, and like, it just works well, oh, man, especially works. because like as you're going through the game in rounds two and four, you'll you'll flip over a couple of each library will have a focus. Like mm -hmm. you want to have historical books, right? Yes. I want to have magic books. Uh, so you will start to be able to deduce a little bit of like what that public library's focus is. So you can then start to strategically try to discard. Make sure you get a lot of banned books going toward the public yep, library the while points. limiting the the focus books. Uh, and then with the prominent works, you just want to have more than the public yeah. library and you can review what you're discarding to the library. Yeah. You can see, so you can try to keep track and like make sure you have more points, uh, more of the prominent works books yeah. rather to get those points. Uh, it's just incredibly fun. And I think you're right with like those location cards, you can have them right here in front of you. Yeah. And there's no one to worry about that else needs to read it. So you can have it nice and close so it's easy to read. And then a couple other things I like is you can only go to each location once. Yes. And like you said, rather than getting more and more locations, you have fewer and fewer. To the yeah. fifth round, you only have two locations. And that's and, harsh. And it just becomes, you see the yeah the window of opportunity is closing throughout the game, yeah. which is very fun. It's really, really fun. Great game that's kind of been overlooked because, again, it has some graphic design issues in terms of like the text is very small. It's, it's kind of hard to get into. Um, but so it's a good, really though. great game that you should try in any capacity if you can, and especially if you like solo games, really try and check it out because it's it's really fantastic. Yeah. Um, but Ex Libris is our number four. Really, really great game. Give it a shot. It's going to get to our number three. Dang.
So Iron Man 3 is another solo. Well, I guess it's not only solo because you can't play this. Um, sure. You yeah, can't play this cooperatively, game. but we've never played it cooperatively. Uh, it, but it's mostly a solo only game, and that is Oniram. Yeah. Oniram is uh, in the Oniverse universe, a bunch of different games in this universe. Um, but Oniram is a game where you are walking through like a dreamscape. You're trying to escape a nightmare. Yeah, you're trying to escape like a dream and stuff like that. And there's nightmares in there. And essentially what it is, is it's it's just, it's a lot of shuffling. Uh, you have a deck of cards and then you are placing cards out into a row up at the very, very top. And the cards have different symbols on them. So they have like suns, moons, keys. And basically what you're trying to do is you have to you can't ever put the same symbol twice in a row. So if I put like a green sun out there, I can't put another sun. I have to change it to a different symbol. Yeah. Color doesn't matter. You can keep the same color. But if you have three of the same colors, so I go like sun, moon, sun. Once you find three of the same color, you get to go find a door. And then yeah. you get to put a door and you have to get a certain amount of doors to win the game. But doors. as you're drawing cards to get more cards in your hand, you can sometimes draw nightmares. And you draw nightmares bad stuff happens and you have to do certain things. You have to either, you can either discard your whole hand, you can discard like five cards off the top of the deck randomly, you can lose a door that you've already found. Discard a key. You can lose a key. And you can do all these different stuff um, and the game ends when the deck ends. If you found all the doors before the deck ends, you win. If you don't, then you lose. Yeah. And it's a very difficult game that's just, you're constantly having to shuffle because whenever you like go through the deck to find a door, you then have to shuffle the deck because then you know where stuff is. So it's a game that's very, very cathartic if you like cathartic amounts of shuffling because you're just sitting there, da da da, and you shuffle, shuffle, you and thing. it's just, it's very, very satisfying to play and it's really hard and there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of different expansions. Um, I'll add something a little bit different and they're yeah. all really, really fun and it's a game that has also a really great app so you can play in the app. We, again, kind of like Friday, we started Start playing the in app. the app, ended up getting the physical game, and I actually like playing the physical game just as much because, again, I, sometimes I want to sit alone and just do a little puzzle and kind of do something with movement in my hands instead of just sitting there like this. Yeah, and it's just, it's point. really nice, you know, and Oniram is a very fun game uh, with great art that p people really, really like as a solo game. It's super duper fun. It's beautiful. Um, it's a fun puzzle. Yeah, definitely check it out, and it's a great app. It's a yeah, fantastic really app, app that has those different um, expansion modules that you can add on their added cost. But, yeah. Um, it's super cool. Yeah, Nyrim is was the first like solo-only game I ever played, and the one I played the most to date. Yeah. Uh, and it's fantastic. Still on my phone. I still bust it out every now yeah. and again. It's fantastic. Good really, game. really great game. Nyrim is number three. Really great game. Uh, it's, it's a very well-known solo game that a lot of people love, and if you haven't tried it, give it a shot. Give it a go. People love it. Yes. But nonetheless, uh, that's our number three. Let's go ahead and get our number two. Chill. So number two has a solo mode so good that you use it in the title sequence of your You Can Solo That, <sighs> that series. That is true. And that is The Networks. The Networks. Um, now, Making TV happen for the people. Yeah, some of you may be surprised because I've very uh, often said this is my favorite game to solo. Yeah. That has since changed. But the Networks uh, is a really great solo game, and it's it's one of my favorite games. Last time we did our top top ten, it was my number four game of all time. It's really, and cool. a lot of that is because of how good the solo game is. And again, like a lot of these games that you can see that we like, your game doesn't change that much. It's mostly you still trying to figure out the puzzle of making the best TV station you possibly can. Yeah. And uh, it works very similarly to a two-player game. Yeah. And the two-player game works differently in the networks, where essentially you have these network cards, which are essentially like special action cards, but on the bottom there's a bunch of different symbols. So in a two-player game, and also in a solo game, you are having to flip over these cards, and then if any of the symbols on the bottom, which are shows, ads, stars, network, network cards, cards. drop-in budget spots, if any of those are highlighted, essentially, yeah. or in color, you have to burn, burn that. that so again, camera. it just simulates someone else taking that. Yeah. So you're like, oh, you burned a show. That means Mike, who isn't here, took that show, yeah. so therefore I can't get Which it. Which could likely happen in a, a higher player account exactly, game. It exactly. It does replicate it very nicely. And then you just do your turn per normal. Then after your turn, you flip over another network card, whatever's on the bottom, if there's anything highlighted, boom, you burn that, and then you do your turn. And then it goes, and you just do that. And again, it's very, very simple, kind of like Viticulture in that way, where this the AI is just blocking spots. It's just burning stuff, yeah. that's it. There's nothing else they Taking do, Taking away really. opportunities. Yeah, and then, um, but it's a, it's a score threshold. I believe it's 265 is what you have to do. 265 viewers, which, by the way, is a lot of viewers. Um, I you, like, I, 
I don't know if I've ever gotten a it's, score that high. It's <laughs> like I've beaten the solo game maybe once. It's really difficult. You do not have times, and because yeah. like like the normal game is like the AI is just burning stuff, and you're just like, stop, stop, stop! I need that! I need that! I it's need like, that! You're I just to. trying to trying to get the stuff you need, and you're just it's just boom, boom, and each time you're just trying to get out, trying to get out there, and it's very, very difficult. But it is super fun and kind of like Ex Libra is kind of like the other things you're just working on your own little puzzle you're yep. working on your own puzzle and then certain things are getting taken away as the AI representing other players and of that you're just you're just working on your efficiency puzzle of just trying to make your station as good as you possibly can and it is so much fun I found it just incredibly enjoyable it's just it's just outstanding and and I've, I've always really loved the solo game it's not my favorite solo game anymore um, it's now to number two, but it's, uh, not, not it's just like great. it's fallen very far. The networks is just such a great game. It's like. such a good game. It's so fun. Go try game. it out. It's just cheeky and it's a good time. Yes. Solid game mechanics underneath the fun of it all as well. It's yeah. just fan Every time I play them, it's like, God, I like this game a lot. Yeah. So, oh, it's real so good. good. So good. Mm. And it's great solo, which helps as well. So that's yes. our number two. Let's go and get into our ooh, number one. It's so good. So deceptively simple. All right, our number one. This butt's favorite game ever. It's the greatest game of all time. Of course, it's the best solo version of all time. Duh. <laughs> that is a feast for Odin. Oh, that's good. It's real good. Talk it's really good. Just it's deceptively simple, like you teased. In this game, it's the, here's the thing. You know, it's funny. This is just a beat your own score game. This one with, is, which like, is so weird. With like, Although, uh, I have my own. Yes. I, I put my, a win or lose scenario yes. on myself. You gotta score 100 to qualify. Yes. And then after that, after that, who cares? Which in the book, it does say if you score 100, that's considered a good solo score. So, like, so I'm well, like, okay, that's, that's just threshold. what I win. Yeah. That's what's weird. It's like, yeah, this is a beat your own score, technically. But it's it's just great because Feast for Odin is just a worker placement lover's delight oh. because there's so many worker placement spaces. It's so good. It's so good. And the way that it works with solo is really <gasps> so brilliant, brilliant and does. Um, the blocking thing uniquely and so the way it works is you'll play as two colors yes you are both colors you'll only do one color in each yeah. round um and in the first round i'll use one color and I'll, I'll have a certain amount of vikings like you do in the game and i will go out and i'll place my workers on certain spaces get my things pay my stuff feed my people all completely no. normal the only difference is at the end of that round, you will not remove those workers from the board. Yep. They will remain for the second round yep. and now will block all those spaces. Yeah. So it is impossible to go to the same space two rounds in a row. Impossible. Which is very difficult because there's certain spaces where like, I really want to go there every round. I really need to I upgrade need these tiles. I, I really need, need fish. fish. <laughs> I need to do these things. I want to pillage and stuff. And you just simply cannot do it because of you. Yeah, you did it to yourself. You blocked your stand. And so, yourself. yeah, and it's just really interesting because that it's a it's a game that has a ton of worker placement spaces yes. anyway. Yeah, it's like sixty. Yeah. And now you get to really enjoy the finding uh, spaces that are simpatico with each other. They yeah. work off each other well. It's like, well, I'm gonna go here this round. The next round, I'll have this thing, and maybe I can go here yeah. because I re received that resource back so, then. You know, and you're just trying to. Find the symbiosis between everything. Yeah, so one thing, uh, to clarify a little farther, so it's like, as Mike said, you put your stuff in the first round, mm -hmm. the second round, they stay there. But yeah. the second round, you have both your colors on there. So the one you put out in the first round then comes, comes off, off, but the second round stays right. there. Then you put those back out, and, and then the round, the flop, second flop, round flop. comes off, and you, you're constantly doing this. And so just trying to get stuff done while you're constantly blocking yourself. Yeah. So you're kind of like, do I want to put this here because I know I'm going to want to go there next time, but I need to go here now and it's yeah it should let not work wait, as well let me as it do does. this over here so i can do this next round yeah it's just brilliant it's like, so simple and it works so well and maybe there's not a solo game out there that's done this but i haven't seen one personally yeah uh and we haven't sold there's i'm sure plenty of games in the comments that are like oh you need to try this you need to try this you need to try this please do put those in the comments because there's so many more but like this one it the the idea of it is so simple you just yeah. you leave it out there and then you just put another color on there you take that one off and it, you just block yourself and it is yeah. so fun it forced me when i played to um 
break out of patterns and habits that yeah. I form when playing that game. I like certain strategies and things. And it's just like, well, you can't do that every round. Yeah. So let me find, let me explore these other spaces. And I actually went to spaces for the first time ever. Yeah. You know, and I was playing with the Norwegians expansion, so it's all a little bit new to me still. Um, and that was really fun. I actually really enjoyed like, hmm, let me think about this. Maybe I can go over here. I haven't really thought of that space. Well, let me get flax now. And let me yeah. get a horse. You know, I never do that otherwise. And so that was really cool as it presented these opportunities um, and then kind of strategically, I'm gonna go here in the second round, I'm gonna do this over here, then the fourth round, that'll be open again, I'm gonna go back yeah. there then. Uh, it was, it just works, it works better than it really oughta. It just works. For being what it is, it just works well and it allows me to play my favorite game regardless of who's around. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. And that's what a cool solo game should do is, is again, take away a barrier to play. Like yeah. make it so that you can play anytime, anywhere. If it's a game you love, there's no reason not to play it. Yeah. And now Feast Roden has that, or has always had that. Now I know that. Yeah. Uh, and so it's fantastic. How could it not be number one? It's great. It's and so And so it keeps good. us Feast Roden. It really is. It took over my number one spot because it's just, it's, it's so, so simple. simple. And it's a game. And it's like, Feast Roden was my number three game of all time. Never yeah. is my number four. So it's like, it's just, it's so, it's so easy and it's so simple. And the puzzle is the same because you're still playing the same game, but it's so different yeah. because you're messing with yourself. And yeah. it's like, it's just, oh, it's so But there's good. no like AI to figure out because no, it's just it's literally in each exactly round, the, same, yeah. the things are already pre-blocked. It's already done. Yep. So you're you just, just you're just playing. And like, it just ma it's very easy. There's literally no AI because you're the AI. Yeah. You're the AI. We're in the matrix But nonetheless... Now. That's our number one. Uh, it's so, so good. Give it a shot. Yeah. Give any of these games a shot. Down in the comments below, put your favorite solo games. There is a ton up there that I know people love. People talk about how much they love Mage Knight solo. People talk, they love uh, Anachrony solo. People love yeah. Spirit Island solo. All these solo Let's games that know people what we should try. freaking love. Um, and we are slowly getting through the solo games that we have. And there's other games we want to pick up because we know they have good solo games. Yeah. One of the cool things also... Is there so many people on like Board Game Geek who just make up their own solo version? Yes, that worked. There's like, like a really solo version well. of Five Tribes. I think Days of Wonder has officially been like, yeah, this is now like an official thing. I played a solo version of Castell that's a lot like an Automa system that works pretty darn well, and yeah, it's really so cool. really cool. And I just love that. So put your links to your favorite like homebrew solo ones down mm. in the comments below. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what you agreed with. Yeah. Um, what should yeah. we be trying? Put all that stuff in the comments below. Because that's usually what it is. If it's something that doesn't make our list, a lot of times it's because we haven't played it before. Yeah. Not because we're haters. Not because we're haters. We just still haven't played Lords of Waterdeep, man. We still get crap on that on we every still. list we possibly can. Yeah. Apparently, it's because we're gatekeepers. It's just because we haven't played it. <laughs> so we need your suggestions of what we should play so we can do that. Uh, put all those in the comments below while you're at it. Give this video a thumbs up. We just want to give a quick shout out to all of our patrons out there. Yes. Thank you so much for Thank being you. supportive, uh, especially during like this Crazy, kind of crazy time. time yeah. uh, we really appreciate it. It allows us to keep doing this. So just shout out to all you patrons. If you want to become a patron today, you can check out the description of this video for Indeed. a little more info on that. Make sure to give us a subscription and just have a great day. Play some solo games. Play some games with people. Have a great time. Just game in any way you can and any want. Any way is a know? good way indeed. And solo is fine as well. So we'll see you next time. I am Mike. I'm Nick. We're the Brothers Murph and we is out of this video now. Bye. Bye.